because I'm here to moderate the Bones panel. And I know they were here last year, so we're going to have to do double duty this year. So let's get it started. First, we have executive producer Stephen Nathan. up on the washing machine and just go in. I had change for a dollar. <laughs> the quarters were stacked. Twelve high. Twenty to the left, twenty-four to the right. I mean, honestly, I think that it was done correctly. I really I, do. I do too, even without the washing machine. Emily? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, maybe uh, there will be other things to be seen later. Um, but I think that it was handled in the best way at the time. Yeah. I was well, pregnant, I also, too. It's also not know. over. I mean, Booth and Ben have been <laughs> separated for three months now. When they come back together, um, who knows? Three months? Who knows what we'll see? So it's been three months? 
It's been about three months, yeah. He's mad. He's mad. He's mad. So, so, when the, so when the new season picks up, she's, she's, she'll have been gone for three months? She'll, she will have been gone for about three months, yeah. Yeah, and everybody has been trying to uh, uh, find a way to get her back, to clear her, and they have been thwarted at every move. And now I think, uh, you know, everybody has been on their best behavior, so they don't compromise any evidence. But at this point, everyone's patience is growing very, very thin, and I'm, Booth can't take it anymore. I think Booth's, Booth's angry enough that uh, he's no longer going to be a good boy, which I think probably everybody wants to see. Again. Does this mean Hannah's going to come back in the picture? <laughs> oh. oh, she's drinking her tall glass of milk somewhere else. <laughs> again, why did I say that? <laughs> Next can we tell? Can we talk about where uh, Brennan has been, or is that like a big reveal? Um, it's a big reveal. You know, she took off with her father. Uh, you know, she hated the life that her father gave her, and now she's depending upon her father to give her the same life she hated. So, um, including her child. Uh, that's right. Her own daughter. Yeah. So they're, you know, they've been hiding and um, uh, and running for three months. So Emily, how has it been, you know, with a new baby of your own and then coming back to work and basically playing a new mother? How's that been? Uh, <laughs> well, I, you know, I love... is real. Fatigue <laughs> is real. There's a lot of things that are real. I, I think that it's, I, Brennan and Emily have never been as similar as um, they have been uh, since having the baby because there's certain things that kind of are universal. People are, you know, I, I'm going through it and I read a script and I'm like, wait a second, that's how I feel, or that's what I'm going through. So uh, I thought that was very cool since uh, Brennan is very different than me in many ways. So um, I haven't really read a script and been like, oh my God, I totally know what that's like when you're giving a lecture and that happens, or you're, you know, looking at this dead body and then one of your assistants, you know, solves the crime instead of you or whatever it is. I, I, I don't know what that, that's like in real life. Nice. I can relate for once. <laughs> That's my character. She relates to me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's been it, for for your characters. I mean, you sort of went from will they or won't they, and then boom, they're new parents. So yeah. we also never really saw you guys as you know just a couple. It was yeah. Like, you know, first one thing and then another. How is that for you guys in terms of like how you feel about your characters and do you? You know, did you miss that, or do you think that actually, I liked it myself. I, I think it helped. Have to I, go, yeah. yeah, I think it does help. I think it just gives an opportunity for more stories, and obviously between the two characters to figure things out. I mean, here they are, thrust upon this, this new child that they've conceived, and hopefully someday we'll see that. If not, it'll be in the heads of all of you somehow. <laughs> and, um, but it allows the two characters to almost move in and just all of a sudden drop all of their stuff on a dining room table and figure out where it all goes. And I think that's really, for us, the relationship has always been so important for the two of us to kind of keep going back to that. And Booth is very stubborn and blue collar and wants to get married, does this, 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 where Brennan, she is more realistic on certain things and she has her questions and I think that tension will always be there. The fact that he thinks he knows how to, you know, repair a you know, dishwasher and it's got it all over the place and it's frustrating her. She could probably do it in five minutes where he would take his time. So you examine that but it creates moments. I think it was a way of actually heightening the tension. You know, heightening the conflict between them because there's nothing, um, you know, worse than having to figure out how to raise a child when you look at the life in, life in completely different ways. The stakes are higher. It's yeah. like the same relationship but the stakes are higher, right? Um, and now we're responsible for a little human being, and you know when we have disagreements, the repercussions are much bigger than they were before. So how is Booth handling being, you know, left behind? I mean, because it's not just Brennan; it's his new baby. Yeah, it's diff it'll be difficult for him. I think when, where his character is was at that moment, I think he deep down understands it, but didn't really get a chance to hear it from her. If he was in on the plan, he possibly would have probably gone through with it and maybe assisted it. But, plus, he is now going to be thrust in a position where he's going to have to deal with the Bureau asking him questions and where are you part of this whole setup and where is she and you have answers. And I don't think he's going to give that up. I think he's the man of action that will, instead of waiting for the papers to be filed, he'll go out and find her on his own, which I think will hopefully open up 
more doors. And when he does finally find her, it's going to take some time to understand why she did what she did. But I think deep down, he'll understand that. But he, <laughs> she's going to pay. <laughs> oh my God. He's got some questions. The washing machine. The washing machine will come back into play. <laughs> Maybe that or the bed that accepts quarters. <laughs> Hotel nine. <laughs> Everyone will be satisfied. So does this bring Brennan closer to her father? Is, is Ryan O'Neill, is he going to be coming back next season? Um, Ryan will be in the first episode. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd like to have him, you know, come back periodically through the, through the next season. But it, it's, um, it was a big deal for Brennan to go on the right. run with the father. Now she sees, maybe she sees it more from his point of view, now that she too is a fugitive. I think she does. I think she understands the necessity of it, and that's what Booth has to accept. There was no other choice. Um, she had to go off the grid. We have a villain this season that we've never really had before. Somebody who, um, our people have always been one step ahead of every criminal, and now we have, a, we have someone who is one step ahead of them. Every time they think they have him, it's not that he runs away, he completely um, turns the tables on them. And we'll see, uh, we'll see it start again in the first episode. Um, and Pallant will, will stay with us through season eight, and he will be um, a cloud that really hangs over their heads and the heads of everyone at the Jeffersonian. It's, it's gonna be a little bit darker this year. Woo! <laughs> he is a great like super he really is. So, well, so, but Brennan's going to come back pretty soon. She's not going to be gone for like the first... Brennan's going to come back soon. Okay. We're, we're trying to get in contact with her now. We're not sure where she is. <laughs> okay. It's very hard. We have everyone at Fox trying to find her. Right, that's funny. Yeah. I just... I just right oh! Yeah. You're good. I'm right here. <laughs> Last I checked, you were... You're always um, right here. Don't say washing machine again. I won't. <laughs> No, no, uh, no, no. The washing machine that uh, is shown in the first act must go off by the third act. Okay. That's uh, done. All right. Uh, so, you know, when I was looking at some of the questions from our, from our fans and also just reviewing the past seasons, you know, it's really, this is a very family-oriented show for a murder procedural with very grisly elements. I mean, because it's like, it sort of started off with like being, you know, that kind of um, alternative family of the cast, but then a lot of each character's family's issues have become very central, and now we have two families that are sort of, so, I mean, it's, it's fairly unique, I think, you know, in terms of like a procedural like that. Was that intentional, or is that just sort of how everybody's characters went, or? Uh, I think it's the natural evolution of the show. You know, we, you know, as, as writers, we saw what the actors brought to it. Um, brought to the show, and we exploited that in every way that we could, you know. And, and you, you don't obviously want to run in place the whole time, and it was, um, it, it just worked for us to see everyone kind of come together. Families being formed, children, children being born, and um, I think the end of last season was the culmination of that, where everyone, where everything was kind of great, and everyone was very comfortable. And the last episode blew that all apart. And I think season eight is going to be dealing with that difficulty. With can we put the pieces back together again? Because it's not just Booth and Brennan who are having difficulty, it's um, Hodgins and Angela, we're gonna be dealing with Sweets and Daisy, and everyone, everyone's life, and Cam and her daughter, and Cam will have a new love interest this year, somebody we know um, who will be very surprising to see her with. <laughs> Um, but all of this is going to change. Ooh. Oh, I can't tell you that. That's You'll tell me. Oh, you can tell me. I will tell you. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I know. Um, but I think this season is going to be a, a season where we see whether they can survive um, what's happened to them. So it's sort of the is love enough season, you know. And the cases hopefully are going to be. Um, uh, even better than they have been, just more bizarre worlds we've never seen before, um, and more difficult cases to solve, and it's going to just create greater tension between everybody. So, um, I'm going to stop talking now. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I like about it is, you know, you have parents who are actually still sexy. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like that, the show has always been 
know, interesting and intriguing and gory and horrible, but also very sexy. And now you, you have babies and you're still sexy. I mean, were, you, were you nervous He's about me? Really I'm not Whoa. sexy. Come on, parents are sexy. Yeah. Maybe not all of them. The relationship has always been important for us. Even you guys are all sexed up over there, and I even brought We're talking us. about Brangelina. Brangelina? <laughs> <laughs> we had a relationship that was, if, in the beginning of the, the, the pilot, we worked so hard on the relationship and always wanted to maintain the relationship and have the relationship be the driving force of it. And along the way, there were people that were like, no, we want this to be the next X-Files, or we want this to be a serious drama. You know, at the end of the scene, hold the moment. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't <laughs> smile, hold it. Come. And it's like, okay, well, where is my other person here in my relationship that really we challenged and decided to really own and hone in on? And it, it helped us get to season three and season four and season five and opened up the doors for other relationships to evolve. With and keeping the humor within the relationship. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to show up at a crime scene and we're going to, you know, do the give and take and we're going to talk about the movie that we saw the line before or the bad taco that she ate or something. It's, it's, it's stuff that people can relate to. I think that's important. Why'd you remember that? Why'd you mean bad taco? Put that in the dad. All right, bad taco. Bad taco. taco. Everyone gets bad taco. But we, you know, when the show started, there was no show like Bones On, really. You know, everything was very serious. You know, it was a procedural and we always saw the show as a, as a crime. You know, I mean, it's it's a crime, but you know, we wanted it to be odd and funny as well, lighthearted. You know, and and it's all all centers on you know these two people. It's it's the characters and how they relate. They're you know totally the odd couple. So I just want to know how early do you find out how gross the corpse is going to be? Oh, we're right. <laughs> you know, we have a phenomenal writing staff. And they are up there, I don't know how they eat lunch, because they're always coming downstairs with, how about this for a body find? What if the body did this? You know, and, and they're all, they're always scientifically accurate. Everything is, is true. Um, it's real? It's all real. And they're real bodies we use. No. The, um, um, <laughs> They, uh, that was a real so, snake, so right? They, that was a real snake? Was that a real snake that came up? No, as a matter of fact, that was a brilliant snake um, oh, wow. uh, designed and built by uh, Look Effects. No. That was a digital snake. Not the one he was holding, but the one that came out of the intestines. Oh, the one that came through the bones. Oh. Yeah. No, uh, it was a snake coming out of the intestines on set. No, he held up a snake, but the snake we just saw in that, that was digital. Oh, well, there was a snake. Oh, well, he didn't, like, re behave. That's no. why. Why don't we have a It's snake? very hard to train a snake. We had a snake there. Yeah. Then you we sit up in bed, but why they can't just use that snake. Because you can't have a snake come out of an intestine. Why? They have yeah, people that train snakes. They're snake training. They get the flu, the germ. Snake, snake germ. <laughs> Everyone's happy, they go home, and he's a snake charmer. It's good to go. All right, right. This, this season we'll get the snake charmer. I think it's a good thing to have. I'm all for it. Bring on the snake charmer. No, but the, the bodies are, you, you know, we hear about what the, uh, you know, what the remains are, and then um, uh, I try to make them even more revolting than that. He gets great pleasure yeah. out of the most disgusting dead bodies. Like, I know, the more disgusting, the more glee. I do. He and has. I can't, if I, I see it on another show, it's horrifying to me. I can't watch he it. He laughs, like, I, I, he and Hart together. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hilarious. There was it's only disturbing. one time it was too revolting, and we cut a shot out. What was that? It was in the first Pallant episode, when the guy comes down the flagpole, he's hung upside down on the flagpole, there was a shot of his face. We don't do fresh dead bodies. And the fresh dead bodies are really creepy. So it was a close-up of it, it, the front of his face exploded. And as delightful as that sounds, it didn't look that good. So it was just kind of a little nauseating. So that was the only time we ever cut anything out. When do you guys find out the cast? When do you find out what you're going to be picking for? Well, they describe it in the script, so we have an idea, and then, or we might get hints before we read the script, but then we don't know what it looks like until we get to the set, usually. 
I ain't there to just a body or whatever. I'm just there to get the information and move on. <laughs> I mean, hey, I, I look to me. She's the one who's got to dissect it, pull it apart, feel it. I just want the information. I want to do the job and get it done and go shoot the gun and get back home. A couple of jokes. A couple the of jokes. It's all there. It's all over. The body looks great. It's disgusting. Let's go. Go back to the FBI, get the body back to the Jeffersonian, and we're good to go. But that's how it works. Wrap it up, people. <laughs> Put a bow on it and get it back home. We have a great, uh, you know, group of people who do the uh, to do the bodies. It's like Jaeger a Jaeger brothers, but they're yeah. not all Jaegers. They're not all Jaegers. That's but, the tricky thing. Have you but ever they, had one, Emily, where you just went, oh no, no, I'm not, no. Yeah, I think I've become completely desensitized. Although, <laughs> ever since having a child. That made me more like watching an episode after having my baby. I, could, I had to turn it off of our show. I was there. I know it's fake, but I, I couldn't watch it. Um, but the the time that I remember being the worst, it was very early on. And I had to put on a human hand, the skin of a human hand, oh, yeah. love. I could not eat my breakfast that morning because it became it was. The, fat, the flesh thing freaks yeah. me out, and I don't know if that's just because we're so used to the decomposing to bones, and the, you know, it's not as, uh, you can kind of pretend that it's not human, you know? Yeah. And then when you have the skin of a hand, and you have to put, oh, uh, yeah. But it's you're very good bones. as a vegan to stand over those bodies like that. That's good. Of course you're not eating. I'm not a cannibal. See? I mean, I, I, it's they, not like. <laughs> why do you have a white glove? Oh, these are, we're going to give away these gloves, and something magic happens when you press the button. You can see through it, and there are, there's what bones are inside. What do you They, they, they go to the Fox fan. Whoa! Oh, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. We should get the whole full body suit. Right? Okay. <laughs> right, so that's very cool. You can't see it here, but you, you can get them at the Fox uh, fan booth. Wow. How much are those? Um, each one is $30,000, you know. <laughs> this is how we finance the show. That's amazing. That means I gotta wear one in the first team episode. Yeah. I'm wearing one of those. You will wear this in the Michael Jackson episode. Great idea. <laughs> I did the dance Michael Jackson in one of the episodes. That was fun. It's good times, Mary. <laughs> so are you gonna direct again? Oh, well, I, uh, um, yeah, yes. I think so. It, it's very difficult. It, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's tough when you're when you're you directing, you're acting. It's difficult to work with you. I know it is. It's hard. <laughs> I, I, I go back. I like. I look at myself as okay. All right, Boreas, so how you talk to Booth? You're gonna look in the mirror and tell him, oh, "You really gotta stop doing what you're doing right now." Okay, just focus. All right, this is David Director talking to David Actors. <laughs> oh, no, I gotta go watch the game. It's in my trailer. The Flyers are down by two. I can't get to the set. What do you mean? You I know. You're always on the set when you're that, directing. That it's great. Trailer. You know, I think it's it's. Uh, for me, it's 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 a great experience. It's I love doing it. It's it's hard, but I always say to myself, when I'm done, I, I don't want to come back and direct. But then I end up directing. It's difficult. It is, but it's when you're working with. Wow, this is exciting. Uh, when you work with such a great group of people, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. And next time I direct, I'm gonna make sure I have these magical gloves on. <laughs> make my it's life the, much easier. It's the trick. No, we, we, he wants a directing, we always twist his arm. <laughs> He's a very good director. He is very fun to work with, too, as a director. I have to say, he has got so much energy, so positive. He just has so many different ideas. He comes in so excited. He loves doing it, and he really is a pleasure to work with. And now, as an actor, that's a whole different <laughs> story. <laughs> but as a director, I enjoy working with him. As an actor, he's watching the game. As <laughs> an actor, he's watching the game the whole time. No, but we're thrilled because everything's in focus. <laughs> That's a, just a tremendous asset for the show. It helps. That does help. Yeah. yeah. Unless we're doing a out of focus episode. <laughs> then we have I another mean, guy. We, we got to go back in time. We need to bring back Buck and Wanda. <laughs> we're going back in time. <laughs> These people love Buck and Wanda. Uh, would, you, would you ever think of directing, Emily? Yeah, I was all set. To direct, and then I got pregnant, and <laughs> uh, you know, as great as it sounds to direct an episode in the first trimester of pregnancy while also acting on the show, it was just not a, it was a terrible idea. So I chose not to, and then and then I had a baby. So I don't know. You Eventually, had a baby? Oh my God! When did this happen? I know it's, it's shocking. I know I we've not talked about it at all. So let me tell you about the baby. Um, Emily's waiting until her baby can say action. Yeah. <laughs> 
convention. Yeah. Wow, that's going to be At some point, I'd love to direct. I, 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 I um, just kept asking Hart, asking Hart, asking Hart. Finally, he said yes, and then I was supposed to direct one episode, and then it had to be delayed, and then I got pregnant. So that's what happened. Wow. That's, you know, the oldest excuse in the book. I know. Men don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, before we go to the Q&A from the audience, I need to ask the, some of the questions from our website so that I do not lose all my integrity as a journalist. Um, so just a couple, uh, will we learn about Booth's mother and also Angela's mother ever? Oh. All the mothers. Well, I think we will we will be investigating Booth's family a little more. You know, the, I, I, think, I think it's time to see his mother. That'd be nice. I'd like to see my mother. <laughs> Booth would really be appreciative. Yeah. We'll find out where your love of washing machines came from. Wow. Well, that's a, well, that's, oh, that is that's a little creepy. That's creepy. That's creepy. That's creepy. That's creepy. That's creepy. That's oh, don't go there. No, no, no. Let's just change the subject. Okay, yeah, moving on. No, moving on. Yeah, tractors. I was just in Minnesota, and I'm obsessed with tractors. <laughs> Have you been to Minnesota? We got wolf! Hey, it's a great place. They got lakes, they got lots of mosquitoes. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great spot. I mean, the lakes are amazing. We should find a body in a lake. <laughs> and just be, I should just be frustrated with all the mosquitoes. We need to get on the water. Get on right enough when we're on the water. The first season, we're on the water. We got boats. Oh, we had more money then. I forgot. That's right. Now it was cheaper. Well, that's true. We, we need to get on the, the water. The economy was different. Everything's different. Time. Different, different times. Different times. It feels good, though. Actually, a couple of people asked, are you going to go out of the country again? Because I know you went to London. Have you gone anywhere? We People were love, inviting you from all, from all over, you know. We would cash. love to go out of the country. If um, they paid us to come to some things, <laughs> right? I think, uh, hey, France, you want to pay for us to go over there? We'll have a good time shooting yeah, that in Paris. Good. Yeah. Pro provide the wine for set, you yeah. know, things like that. I think that, you know, it's hard um, with the economy, with the, our budgets and everything. It, it kind of is not a reality right now. Universal back lot looks great. But <laughs> it's fantastic. It works. Right. It's but any that doesn't say that it can't happen. Hey, we should go to Canada. Why don't we go to Canada? 